see you've got some green and black on today. You know what? I'll tell you what. I've been just buying things that are green a lot. Like, like even I just went to the op shop and I got this little top and it's green. I was oh like, yeah. Gosh. You know, I, you know, I'm shopping and just op shopping <laughs> and just getting green because it's this color that re- I'm, I feel very protected. I feel very at peace. And when I wear it, I feel quite, you know, like things are going to be okay. But yeah, let's get started. So, Hello everyone, it's this Maria Tran. I'm here with Lakshmi and she is an amazing Western Sydney designer, a very unique designer. Lakshmi, thanks for chatting with me. But before I get started, I just want to let people know that the dress that everyone's been talking to me and asking me about is a dress that was designed by her. It's for the last King of the Cross red carpet and it was a stunner. It really stood out. Um, but before we get into that, let's let's hear from you. Yay! It's so exciting to be here with you again. Always such a joy to connect with you over here in Sydney and you're there in Vegas, I believe. That's correct. Yay! Yeah. Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to start. But first of all, you absolutely smashed it in literally everything you do and on the red carpet. You brought so much life and light to that dress and it was an honor to work with you and to dress you for this event. And I was just so proud, like as a designer and seeing you there wearing that beautiful piece, you you did it justice and I, I couldn't be happier. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Lakshmi Gowda and I run a sustainable design company alongside my mother, Susan, and we specialize in couture art and home decor, upcycled pieces, literally taking pre-existing parts, scraps, offcuts, vintage, and turning them into brand new luxury items, quality pieces that can last for generations to come. That's amazing. Like, one of the talking points I remembered, people were like, oh, wow, the dress is amazing. And when I tell people that it is made from recyclable materials, people just like, believe they're stunned. They're really shocked. And then the people just start touching it. Really? Like, like it just didn't compute. And it's just interesting for me to see the fact that people, whenever they think of something that is used recycled they don't have a value for it but then you're able to repurpose it and make something new and also like cultural like how does that feel for you when you're on this journey of doing something like that oh yeah it's um it's crazy because when it's something that you do every day in your normal life sometimes like we don't always see it that way and We've been doing the upcycling thing for years. My mom started it when she was a little girl. She just loved creativity and passed that skill on to me. And I developed that same passion. It's kind of like a love for the art. We just love creating beautiful things. And I remember when I was a very young person, we didn't have a lot in that time. And I remember I would see these beautiful creations on celebrities and leaders and thought, wow, like I would love something like that. So I would try and see if I could come up with something like that using old clothes or like get scraps or whatever and create these stunning pieces in my little bedroom and with a hope that one day they would be seen (laughs) by everyone. And some of those pieces I made as a young person now have been on red carpets, which is really exciting. But it just goes down to the passion, you know, the love for the art, creativity. We absolutely love nature, so inspired by God's creation. And it's an unmatched beauty. And there's so much you can take from that and create. And to be able to take that and transform it into something that someone can wear, that's truly magical. And it warms my heart being able to share that with other people. Now, for me, what I found with you, um, Lakshmi, is that you actually go beyond, um, I don't know, fashion designer. There's something about you that I feel like um, you can sense people, you can sense like the things that they wear and what that communicates to the world, as well as how um, things that we put on, on ourselves can also amplify who we are. Now, we spoke a little bit about that. Can you tell us a little bit more? Because I'm sure audiences might be very keen about that aspect that you do. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up because 
it's this literal skill that has really helped me step into my confidence and become the person I am today. I've always believed, especially growing up in what you could describe as obscurity, interesting places where there isn't always heaps of opportunity and things like that. But I always had this inner desire, this inner strength that my life matters and I'm here to do something. And growing up with people in these obscure areas, we all have that. And it would break my heart to think that, wow, there's so much talent and so much in people here, but they don't know how to harness that or bring that out. So something that gave me the power and the confidence to really start making things happen for my life when I lived in an area where there wasn't much going on was through the clothing and creating these power pieces. So I always had this passion to find what's on the inside of a person, their purpose, their soul, their spirit. What does that look like? And how can we illustrate that on the outside? And I feel like as human beings, we have so much incredibleness within us and it's not always seen on the outside and in a physical realm we're constantly judged for our physical appearance and what we have and what it all looks like and I find something that has been massively helpful is to illustrate that on the outside so to keep it really short in a nutshell I've been developing the skill all my life and testing out different looks and different things and honestly like showing up and dressing as that has opened so many doors for me and I've been able to pass that on to other people and watch their lives transform. I even went into study actually in Orange County with an incredible lady who specializes in this quantum science and really discovering that certain fabrics and textures and styles emphasize different parts of us and going into the science of the makeup of who we are as people and that certain colors will bring out better parts of you. It, it goes very deep. And I feel like a big part of that skill is a gift and intuition. And it's something that we can all tap into, but I feel as a designer, it's part of my role to be able to share that with other people. And I found that this particular thing, pairing your intuition, with your purpose and your creativity, you really bring the best out in others. And that in turn brings out the best in the world. And we can all show up as our best self and make a better planet. That's fantastic. Now with the process of um, like uh, recycle, using recyclable materials and, and uh, upcycling, I know it's a process that your mum kept on doing like when she was much younger and you probably grew up seeing her doing this what were some of the visual memories you remembered mum doing when she was you know in her st beginning stages of of doing it yeah right at the beginning she always made us matching outfits right from scratch and when I mean outfits I'm talking like the matching dress, the matching shoes, gloves, a big hat with a big flower, the whole thing and little matching glasses. And I remember the earliest memory I have, I think it was about three or four. And I just remember walking with her and so many people would stop us on the street. Wow, you know, you both look so beautiful. Oh, how cute. And I just observed this and how much fun she had dressing me up and making the outfits. And it was just so exciting to be able to wear a new outfit to a different event. So that would be my first memory. And then I remember at home, she's always been into art and craft. She was always painting, drawing, cutting things up and sewing. And I was always curious about it. Like, what is she doing? And she never forced anything upon me. I naturally would come to her and then she would sit me down and say, you try. And then I'd get the little scissors and the little paintbrush and start creating all these things. And that ended up turning into like a proper collaboration, even all those years ago. So we'd actually enter art competitions, costume competitions, um, all throughout my school. And we actually won first place at every single one, my entire schooling, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been like a collaboration since birth I guess and now it's a business 
That's so, so unusual and unique because how many people do we know actually um, not only have a creative practice, but they collaborate so deeply with their family members? You know, I find that people tend to, you know, live with their families, but once they get to a certain age, I'm out, I'm out, I'm doing my thing. I'll try, I'll show you, I can make it. I'll show you, I can make it. It's usually that sort of energy and attitude, but I feel like in your case, it's always been this nurturing co-creation, like family giving, passing down something, but then it's also creating together. And then knowing that we're actively changing the world through just these moments. I feel like when you both are in the zone creating and, and, and making these pieces, there is this energetic connection to the rest of the world. I know it's found sounds really bizarre, but I feel like when you create, it's, it's, it's almost opening up the world, opening up people's hearts when they see it. Like I wore your dress. I remembered feeling anxious, but then when I saw the look on people's faces at first, and then when they know more about the story, I just felt them, their, their hearts opening up and their mind, their closed minds opening up even further. And then I was like, yeah, it's, it's created by mother and daughter in Blacktown, you know, multiracial family. (laughs) They're just like, their brains just like, whoa. And then they're like, what, can I find them? And then I saw them checking on their website and they're Oh, is, is that her? I'm like, is that her or model? I mean, no, that's her. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's a sort of strange thing of like going, how could um these people exist? You know, like yeah. ability to be a be creative, um, not be chasing the fame and fortune, be able to work within your family. Yeah pieces that mean so much to the world like I feel like people get a bit overwhelmed that you are it you are doing it and and yeah it was quite interesting to see that like you know in a flash I can see people's brains like they can you can kind of just imagine them what they're hearing and they're just like well are you serious are you sure like am I hearing correctly so I think what you said is a huge thing it's not only your the works that you create your works that you create create the attention drawing the attention to tell a bigger story you know and and I I know too like um you know with with your mom there's 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 quite a bit of a story there can we explore a little bit of yeah oh my gosh there's so many things we can dive into I'm like which one first (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. so you, you you take the lead with that one yeah yeah I it's um oh we could talk about this for hours. There's so much to this and there's a reason why, you know, things have happened the way they have and why we're in the place we are today and how we think and how we operate. It's been a very long journey of learning. And even though I've only lived on this planet for 30 years, it feels like many lifetimes. (laughs) So much stuff has happened. Um, And I feel like I definitely credit that to my parents because they're just such incredible people, massive overcome is like nothing's a, a, a challenge it's like there's always an answer there's always a solution and you know they've come from very interesting backgrounds which I can see has contributed to that type of thinking so I feel very blessed that I've had that foundation that grounding um, to help me be who I am today oh my gosh but it's you're right it's it breaks my heart a bit to see there's a massive kind of splitting up of families family dynamics and things especially in today's world I feel like one of the things I've noticed is, and I understand there's a lot of pressure, but people just give up too easily. And I think with social media and everything, we're so used to getting everything so quickly. But the truth is we live in a physical realm that has certain laws and principles and energy, and that's not going to change. That stays the same. And, you know, when you understand that, and often we only understand when we go through the hard times, which I think has helped me understand that, you really see the beauty of sticking it out and the power of doing things with your family if you can. There is something so powerful about a family that's united. And I know that's so hard and we're not perfect. We've had many arguments and fights just like everybody else. But I find purpose has a lot to do with it. When everyone has an idea of their purpose and you realize the people around you, you're all in alignment in some way and you decide that you can do something together, even if it's so hard, anything's going to be hard. Why don't you just do it with the people who love you, who are already there and around you? It just makes the process so much like, I don't want to say easier, but 
in a way it's more smooth and it's more fun because you grow together. It's sad. I feel like that's a bit missing in today. And when you look back into history, these incredible empires that have been formed in kingdoms, it was all started with families. The family unit is so powerful. And I know it's hard, but it's it's everything. Like you do the counseling, you know, go to your church group or whatever that looks like for you. Work, work it out. Don't give up. That's been a massive part of our journey, um, you know, in communication and making time. I know a lot of kids when they get to their 20s, like I'm moving out and not talking anymore and all that. I always made an effort to come and visit my parents or do the catch up phone call, even if it was hard. And sitting down around a meal is so powerful. Like just having dinner, you know, and, and communicating. And I like, to just, we kind of see each other, even though we're family, but we acknowledge each other as an individual human being that has gifts and things to share. And I feel like with family, we forget that, that the people around us are their own person with gifts and purpose of their own. And so I try to see my parents, you know, as well as my parents, but objectively, you know, these are beautiful people who are on this planet. We're not perfect, but they're here to do something special. I want to find out what that is. And when it, you start with that, it will be reciprocated somehow. It's not easy, but it's doable. And I, I couldn't have it any other way. It, it's, it's so special when you can have that dynamic. That's amazing because it kind of makes me feel like a lot of your pieces have this sense of groundedness because you've got, you're quite connected to your family, but also you know, the textures of your creations are always very layered and very intricate. Is there a particular style or when it comes to designing, how would you describe your your sets, your collection and, and your style when it comes to that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the best person who can answer that would be Susan, my mom, who is the B in Luxury B. So she's the artistic genius. I, I do art myself as well, but when all those intricate patterns, that's her work, the work of her hands. So since a child, she's always had this incredible gift to be able to piece things together in a way that's very harmonizing. And that really comes from her heart and her passion. Like I've seen her, it's almost like a jigsaw puzzle. She has this ability to like grab bits and bobs from all these different things and somehow make this artwork. And she does things like, like these tapestries. She did bed sheets, like sweaters for us growing up with these animals made of all these different parts, almost like a mosaic. It's a little bit like that. And she's just, she just loves it. You know, she could sit there for hours, days, weeks, like piecing together these things. So her process, it's really from the heart, from the passion for the love for the art, the love for creativity, uh, expressing the beauty of creation. I know a lot of her inspiration is from nature and natural creation. And she, she just really loves it. You know, I think this is what she was born to do. She, she never like rushes through things. So all the intricate details and textures that you see, these things, they're not overnight things. This is like hours and hours of piecing and color matching, color toning. It's a natural intuitive gift that she has. But I've seen her like work on things for up to six months before, like the butterfly dresses that we've done, the big wing that's intricately embroidered. That was a project she did over about six months. Um, the whole thing is hand done, hand pieced together. So it's very much couture, very much art, which is why we call it couture art. It's like the best way I could describe it. Now, I notice I've seen that you both do workshops for the community. Now, what some of the things do people come to those workshops and they sort of get a chance to see and learn? Yeah, well, the most recent one we did, uh, which was really cool, was basically teaching people about sustainability, about how to navigate the world today, how to be sustainable in today's world. Because I think sometimes when we talk about sustainable fashion and things like that, if you're not in that world, it's like, what is that? Or how do I even do that? Or I don't have enough money to do that. And we went through a process of 
you know, investing in quality pieces, how to shop sustainably, researching brands before you buy and why that's important. And I think the biggest question I get from people is, Lakshmi, I want to do sustainability. I can't afford this like couture, you know, quality piece. How can I do it at home? And how I started was I would say, use what you have in your home. It could be anything. I've made clothes out of bed sheets before and things. Mending pieces is very important. Taking care of your pieces, simple little restyles, like changing belts, restyling and all that kind of stuff. I, you came to my house and you saw the garden display we did. And I, we made these lanterns out of old protein shake containers. You can use anything, literally. I've even made gowns. One of the gowns we did, kind of similar to this one, it was actually made out of four different old handbags. So that's a bit more intricate. But simple things would be like recoloring a button, for example. A really good tip I learned from someone was you get nail polish and you just paint over the button and that can completely transform an outfit that you're bored of or want to shape up a little bit. I've even painted belts. Uh, you can get fabric paint uh, from your local store. It's inexpensive, changing colors of accessories. So we went through all of that process. And those are things that anybody can do at home. They don't take long. Uh, you can even do in front of the TV when you're chilling out after a big day. And it's quite therapeutic, actually. It's uh, something literally anybody can do. Another workshop that I do is discovering your purpose, like who you are. So I'm very passionate about empowering people, especially our young people in today's tech world, sharing my experiences, what I've been through, red flags to look out for in the industry, how to prepare yourself for business and really just having the confidence to be who you are. So that's some of the stuff that we do in the community with workshops. That's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about the state of like, um, you know, like clothing and how people's relationships to clothing and consumerism in the modern day society and also uh, well, what some of the issues young people are facing when it comes to that and maybe mental health and all of that as well and also social media hmm. oh that's a, a big big question so many things we can cover the first thing that shoots out at me when you said that was waste culture there's uh there's awareness coming out now I notice our young people they're very on top of it they're very cluey about these issues which is super exciting. I think we're going to see an amazing future. Despite all the challenges, there is so much potential for a, a much better system, better ways of doing business, more resourceful, less waste. I know a lot of young people now go vintage shopping, op shopping. So that's been trending lately, which is really exciting. But yeah, the waste culture, the way pre-existing businesses right now, some of the large corporations the work practices, the procedures, the waste, all it's it's it goes very, very deep. There, there's a lot of issue there. But I think the most positive thing I can say is that awareness is coming out. Our young people are pretty cluey, they're onto it. And there has been pressure that has now been put on some of these larger companies to change the way they do business. And I can see that they're seeing sustainability. Even if they're not ethical, they're seeing, okay, this is trending, let's jump on it. So even though they're very into a money grab, they're still awakening to the fact that sustainability is the future and it's something that they should start looking into. Those are some of the things I've seen, but, but this is a huge power pack question. We could go into so many different aspects of it, yeah. Wow. So for me, it feels like you're not just only a person who designs pieces or a designer itself, but you're someone who really thinks quite deeply in different aspects that affect how humans connect with themselves and the environment. And for me, I just want to ask you, where do you see yourself being? Where do you hope to go to keep on spreading this message and, 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 and showing the world that there is another way to doing things? Oh, such a good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, kind oh, of it's so deep <laughs> yeah 
Oh my gosh. I could give you like a whole book. <laughs> it's going to be amplified. It's going to be made happen. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that always comes to my mind, like the impact that I want to make and why I'm even on this planet and why I'm even doing what I'm doing is there's such a lack of peace in people and our planet and with our work and everything we do as well as all the many facets like sustainability protecting nature and treating our fellow humans better and all that kind of stuff it's the overall would be summed up as peace I really want to see more peace in the world for people to realize that these crazy systems that We've been brought up in and taught to think this is how it is. This is how you do business. It's not working for us. Human beings, we're flesh and blood beings with a soul. You know, we're walking on earth. It, these structures, they don't match the planet that we live on. And I don't know, growing up in that way and appreciating nature and all that, I just want to see a world where we can really show people we don't have to be this way. We don't have to stress out. It's okay. And if we work in harmony with our planet and with each other, I truly know we can achieve much, much greater things than what we're seeing where everyone is sustained. Yeah. Everybody is not worried about meals or income or anything like that. There are, there are other ways to sustain a human life and be happy. And I know in, in this conversation, there's so many aspects you can go into, but it's so Something that comes to mind is usually people who are very much in that chaotic go-go world, finance, money, all that kind of thing, sometimes see sustainability and being grounded with the earth as a grungy kind of thing. Oh, we got to be hippies or, uh, you know, we can't have nice things. No, no, definitely not. Everyone can do it in their own way. The beauty of us as people, we're all so diverse and so different we can do this in our own way. And for myself, I love beautiful things. I love glamour, you know, but we can do glamour sustainably and not hurt the planet using beautiful resources, uh, making better buildings and homes that are sustainable and still glamorous and beautiful and happy and breathable <laughs> and nice that smell nice. <laughs> you know, so, I'm just going to put I'm, it out there, but I would like to see... Some network picking you up and doing a TV series on you, like a reality thing that you are following your journeys on how they put you into certain scenarios and how you repurpose things. That would be oh, so cool. So good. I was telling you before, and I, I just kind of see it. I can imagine like whoever watches this, whatever producer go, you know what, we're going to do a show on this woman and her mom and their journey and how they, they, they create things from nothing. Like this is going to be so cool. You know, like you'll be the next better homes and gardens, all these other shows. We want to see a face like you on it and leading it. So that's what I think. If I, if, if I'm, my senses are correct in future, maybe in five or whatever years, it's going to be there. It's in there <laughs> somewhere. Because for me, when I look at what you do, it's so like wholesome it's not like you're learning be it's not bitty it's 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 such a I can see the big picture and when I look at what you do it's always big picture yes it's eye-catching but eye-catching leading to the big picture and you're so yeah. quick to leading to the big picture a lot of people who are glamorous and you know eye-catching you ask them a deep and meaningful question and they cannot answer it and I'm thinking in my head why are these people being idolized when you ask them a question about the meaning of life or they cannot answer it. They haven't even thought to that far. And yet you're yeah. like, you, you're someone I think that should be seen and heard because when people ask you from a common person to someone, any, in any level asking you a question, you're able to answer it because it comes from your heart because you create from your your heart as well, you know? So I want to throw it out because I really want that to be something that you also see because I see it so clearly. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much I really appreciate that I was just saying you know in this industry in our industry it's sad but it's very rare for me to meet people like you and that's why I was so grateful that we connected with you because you are that you, you are a light in this industry and you're doing things from the heart and it's it's so obvious and so clear and it's look at the beauty that can come out of that 
when we operate from a different place. It's mm-hmm. amazing. And you, you know, you've had so much success and this is only the beginning. It's only going to keep blowing up. And what it's, it's like, just such a forever as well. It's so funny. <laughs> it's like, we just keep connecting and I like that. And I just love it, you know. And when I look at you, all I see is, man, I want to see her there. Please, please, please. If that in my head, in my heart, is if I got any ideas, can I give it to her? Okay, I'll give it to her, I'll give it to her. And that was one big idea. <laughs> I see a TV series or some sort of show that you're on. Like, I don't know, but you have a natural ability to communicate this stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, I pre- Just the creation. I I will share for any viewers, we are working on a lifestyle series for YouTube right now. We actually took on a project during COVID because we're all stuck indoors. And um, my mom and I were living together, seeing the same four white walls every day. And we thought, we're stuck inside. Why don't we turn this place into a magical experience? And we can't go out. We can't get much stuff. We literally just used whatever we had. I'm talking like cardboard boxes like old jars and protein shake containers and little paints that we had left over and we made these beautiful sets which you've already seen and that is something we've been filming the whole process of to share with people like how you can just use stuff that you have around you and make a truly beautiful place because I also feel that something we all saw in COVID is that your space massively affects your mental health. And even going back to the mental health thing you brought up before, so, so important, Um, especially with tech and all the crazy things going on. So important to shuttle that off and come back to a place of retreat. And I know nature is one of the most healing things we can do as people, but even like COVID where it was limited and we couldn't even go outside we thought, how can we make a natural, beautiful, inspiring space inside that can still take us there to those beautiful places, even though we can't travel or anything. And when we did that, and so that's something we've been feeling that we'll be releasing very soon, which is exciting. That is so cool. You're so amazing. Even in time of COVID, you and your mom are able to put your brains together and, and create like a, a platform to express what were all of the ways to be, you know, creating spaces that help us, you know, feel light and feel calm and feel like we can be creative as well. Any last, if there was a final piece of like advice that you would give to people, maybe another up and coming creative person, what would that be? Oh, I love this question so much. It's it's like the answer that I always needed growing up. And it comes from my parents, especially my mom. She always said that great change is always made by taking one single step. And I feel like today, especially if you're in a place where you don't have much opportunity or resources and you're like, how on earth can I get there? And it looks so impossible. What I've always wanted to tell people and even from my own life experience is understanding that great change is made by doing whatever you can, using whatever you have. It's about the faith paired with an action. And we live on a planet where there is universal energy. It's very real. And there are certain laws and principles. You don't have to have it all. You know, I didn't have it all, or the opportunities. I would go to cities, I didn't even know anybody at all. And here I am, you know, working with you and you're doing this major TV show and zooming all the way back to the days where I was around none of this, no opportunity. Literally, whatever it is in your house, wherever you are, wherever you're living, even if it seems stupid or silly, it's not. If you have the desire to draw towards something, even if it's just painting on a piece of paper where you paint your story, whatever that is, do that, whatever that is, and it will open up a channel for you. Just taking the step in front of you using what you have will get you to where you need to be eventually. And that's something that I really want to share with people because that's pretty much sums up my life (laughs) so far thank you so much Lakshmi like it was been such a pleasure having this conversation with you and I know that 
who the people who were going to watch it, they're probably going to find these little gems, these moments that they can take away and be inspired to keep going wherever the path that they go into. And it's so good that we're able to you know, be a little bit courageous and bold and, and capture this and share it with the world because we are both game changers in different fields, you know, and we'll, <laughs> When we connect, we're like like fireworks because because we know we give that energy to each other to to keep yeah. going and, and and knowing that there is a going to be it's going to be amazing wherever it is that we're going it's going to be so much amaze um, uh, such a fantastic I don't know I just feel good that what we're we're doing is the right thing and when we 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 I can see into the future that what we're doing is going to touch so many di- different people and they're going to keep going and that's what keeps us that joy to see yeah. that we are creating a difference in that.